1 plus negative 1 certainly can't cause any arguments, can it? It's of course equal to 0. But if we put a 0 in the exponent of 1, this is what some scholars regard as an utterly diabolical expression. While it can cause great controversy, of course it is easy to evaluate the value of this expression. Since the 1 has a 0 on it, it's 0. And so this is 1 plus negative 0, which of course is just equal to 1. Now, of course, that's made up nonsense, that's a joke, uh, let's actually evaluate this. The problem, and indeed what causes all of the arguments, is the placement of the exponent and to which quantity it actually applies. One group of people may think that this is 1 plus negative 1 to the power of 0, so that exponent of 0 is being applied to the negative 1, which at a glance does indeed seem reasonable. Under this interpretation, of course, anything to the power of zero is regarded as what's called an empty product and takes on the value of the multiplicative identity, namely one. So this would be one plus one and we would get two as our final answer. The other group would appeal to our well-known order of operations, PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Namely, you have to see that E, which stands for exponent, comes before the M, which stands for multiplication. Under this view, we see that the exponent of zero should be applied to the one before the multiplication by the negative is applied. So viewing the negative as itself being a multiplication by negative one, it must take place after the exponent of zero. And thus we would regard the expression more clearly written as one plus negative one to the power of zero, so that the exponent of zero is applying only to the one. Again, one to the power of zero is just one, so this would end up being one plus negative one, and thus we would get an answer of zero. And this is technically correct. Many people would regard an expression like this as being written in an ambiguous manner, but it's really not ambiguous. If we follow the order of operations exactly, this expression has one definite value. It's certainly zero because exponentiation has to come before the multiplication. That is not to say that this expression is completely innocent. Indeed, writing mathematics just like all writing, is a collaboration between the author and the reader, and it is the author's burden to write things in a comprehensible manner for the intended audience. And while a reader of basic mathematics may reasonably be expected to understand the correct order of operations, a skilled author should know that an expression like this has a high chance of being misinterpreted. Of course, authors of mathematical expressions and problems know this, which is exactly why many people will post a hideous problem like this, 8 divided by 2 times parentheses 2 plus 2, and appeal to the denizens of the internet to argue about it and figure out what the heck it equals. This expression, once again, has a single definite value if we follow our order of operations, you know, letter by letter, very carefully. But it really does require a degree of care from the reader which almost borders on recklessness. So how could we evaluate an expression like this? Every solution will certainly recognize that 2 plus 2 is in parentheses and so needs to be carried out first. We would thus arrive at 8 divided by 2 times 2 plus 2 is 4 and so that remains in parentheses. Then an ardent follower of PEMDAS would know that we have division and multiplication here. However, those are to be performed formed from left to right. They are on the same tier of priority, multiplication and division. So when we see them, both, in an expression like this, we carry them out from left to right, and thus have 8 divided by 2, which is 4, which is left to get multiplied by the 4 in parentheses, and arrive at a final answer of 16. Others will take a different approach, again recognizing that 2 plus 2 is 4 and that needs to be done first, so we have 8 divided by 2 times parentheses 4, but then recognizing this is implied multiplication. There's no multiplication symbol, it is implied multiplication, which sometimes people view as being grouped by itself. 
If 2 is written directly next to the 4, the product is kind of viewed as an individual object, and so we might carry out that arithmetic first, and thus have 8 divided by 8 and arrive at 1 as our final answer. Of course, this is technically incorrect. It's not the value we would get if we followed the agreed upon order of operations exactly. So who is at fault when this expression is evaluated incorrectly? Is it he who has done the math wrong, who bears the burden of his sins, or is it the author who has deliberately written an expression which could be interpreted in two different ways by reasonable people? Ultimately, nobody doing serious mathematics would write an expression like this, partly because of its careless ambiguity, but just as much because of the hideous division sign. We don't like that very much. We much prefer fraction bars. Indeed, if we write a similar expression, but with a fraction bar, all ambiguity has been lost. This expression is perfect, it's beautiful, it takes on a single value, and all reasonable people agree it's equal to 1. We could also capture the other possible value for this expression with no ambiguity using fraction bars too, by writing 8 over 2 multiplied by 2 plus 2. This again would give us 4 times 4, giving us that answer of 16, which agrees with the PEMDAS solution of this expression. Ultimately, math people will continue to shake their heads when the general public goes crazy over these poorly written expressions, but in the end, if it helps somebody review their order of operations, who hasn't thought about it in 30 years, what's the harm?